What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm John Rone with Sophisticated Redneckery. It's winter time, and I'm gonna bring you another DIY video. The DIY videos in this channel seem to do great. So, my kids play baseball. We've got a lot of bats. We've got things laying around the garage. What a better project to do than a simple DIY bat rack. This bat rack project I've done before in the past, probably 10 years ago, 15 years ago for myself. I'm doing it again for you guys on this channel. This is super easy, super fun. It's gonna cost you less than $10 to get your kids a custom back rack. However you wanna make it, however you wanna finish it on your wall of your garage or your basement or wherever you guys hit or keep your bats. This is a simple wood project, doesn't take a lot of tools. I'm gonna go over start to finish with you guys and show you how mine came out at the end. Let's cut to what you need to build this bat rack. Hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for hanging out, y'all. So we're back in the garage and here are the items we're going to need to build this baseball bat rack. You can tell I'm back in the garage. This place is a mess. It's around Christmas time. It is the middle of January. It is freezing outside, literally freezing. It's 24 degrees. All right, I'm going to try to stay in the light for you guys. This is what we're going to need for our bat rack, our bat rack project. Let's start off with our any piece of three quarter inch or one by piece of material. Now I got a one by four from Home Depot because I like this finished material wood. It's already done, but you could use literally, you could literally use a um, piece of a pallet. You could use a lot of things for this bat rack. Anything scrap you have laying around makes it fun. You can make it look rustic, whatnot. I'm using the pre-finished wood ready to, or pre-milled wood ready to go. It makes it easier. I just like the finished look at the end. We're going to need sander. You can use sandpaper as well. I use electric sander. We're going to need a jigsaw. We're going to need a square, your tape measure, some screws. These are one and a quarter inch wood screws, a one and one quarter inch pallet, um, paddle blade. And I don't have a countersink bit, so I'm going to use this for my countersink, a drill bit, a pen or a pencil, wood glue, and your drill. Now what you also might need is a miter saw or something to cut that piece of wood with. I'm gonna have Chase help me out on this one. I'm gonna see if he's gonna come down to the garage. It's cold, if not, we can't even see our breath. It's not that bad, but it is 24 degrees outside. We're gonna build this bat rack. Let's get after it, y'all. So Chase is gonna drill this pre-cut 35 inch board, but first he's gotta measure it. We're gonna have our holes for our bats every two and a half inches apart, okay? So we're gonna draw those first. And when we're done, we'll mark the cross, the depth we want. He's going to show you how to do that. And then we'll start drilling. Okay, so give me two and a half inches. Give me a mark. That's two inches. Erase it. Two and a half. Good. Make your B mark, right? So that's good. Actually, that's fine. Just draw a line. Now, two and a half plus two and a half is what? Uh, four. And a half. Five. Five. So five is your next mark. Right? Wait, what? Two and a half plus two and a half is what? Five. five. So now what's five plus two and a half? Nope. Seven. Oh, Erase yeah, it. Seven. This is how we learn math and fractions in our house. Let them do DIY projects and use the tape measure. A tape measure makes it really easy to learn halves, quarters, eighths, thirds, things like that. See the black mark I have on there? That's two and a quarter. But you need it right at two and a quarter. Make it across. Perfect. Okay, now you have to do it all of them. Two and one quarter. I marked it right there. Two and one quarter. Put, put it right on the hole. You got it? And nope. I already, I already okay, made you don't push too hard. You have two hands on the drill. You don't want it to get away from you. So you want to hold that drill. Okay, right? hold the drill with me. Go ahead. Okay. Hold it. It's going to make a mess. All right, so we got the holes drilled. Good job, little buddy. Way to go. Now, the next step is to cut the channels for the bats to slide in. They're just my eyes. They're my eyes. <laughs> there you are. For this part, we're going to use the jigsaw. Jigsaw, we're going to basically draw two straight lines for the handle to go in and the knob to fit down on those holes. 
the jigsaw is the gr other green one in there, buddy. So here's what we're gonna do. Okay, so now we gotta cut channels that wide. And we are using this ginormous green thing. We take our jigsaw. It's loud. Have to test. We're gonna have to test it out. Test one. I think that's a little oh, narrow. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Got our mini bat. <laughs> nope. It needs to be a little wider. Go get the other green bat. Sammy. Yeah. So we want it a little bit bigger, right? Yeah. Try that one. Boom. Try the next one. Boom. Okay. Perfect. All right, you got to test them all out. They might not look perfect right now. They're not perfect. We're going to smooth out all those edges, make them look pretty. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. You can make yours perfect if you're staining it and doing all that fun stuff. I just want to show you a quick DIY, how to make a quick bat rack out of scrap wood or whatever you have, the process people, to get it done. What do people mean by DIY? Do it yourself. Do it. No. Do it. Speaking. Do it. <laughs> All right, now, oh, now we need to get the sander out and start sanding, buddy. Good. Now we'll, we'll get our hand sandpaper in there and work these inside edges a little bit more, uh, a little more aggressively, but we're going to get the top and the front edges, round them all off. And I say round them off, I'm going to round those edges off so there's no sharp corners for our bats to keep hitting against, right? So sit on the here nice and pretty. All right, y'all, so I ran down the garage and grabbed two more things I had forgotten that I was going to need are just a couple hand files. Flat hand file, of course, on one side, smoother on the other, and then a round one just to smooth out some of these edges I'm not liking. Make it look a little prettier, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's our number one DIY video right there. The truck box video. Go check out our DIY series. I like to do these particularly in the winter when it's colder and we're not out fishing or I'm not hunting that day. DIY, way to go. It's the way to go. All right, so here is the uh, rough finished product. You can see all the holes are cut. We are looking good. Sanded down, the co corners are smooth. I don't like rough edges on this, my stuff. So I sanded all those edges down to make them nice and rounded. The bats can fit in perfect. We're good to go. Guys, the next part of the project is we're gonna take our bat rack we just made and we're going to attach our backing board to that. And what the backing board is going to allow us to do is screw this into the wall and give it a little more support than we would normally have if we just put like little L brackets on it. Now, when you're doing this, the key is you got to put this, this thing upside down because when we mount this, it's going to go on the wall the other way, right? So it's going to be this way when we mount it on the wall, just like this. It'll give us a good standoff from the wall for the bats. They can hang there and they don't beat up against the wall. And that's the way it's going to look. I'm going to drill the pilot holes for us. Straight through. Good. Drill back out. Good job. Do the next one. Now we got to glue the top edge of this bad boy. Just a nice little, no, it doesn't have to be too thick. Just a nice thin bead all the way across. Chase said he's really good with glue. How good are you? How good are you? Sometimes it doesn't come out. Okay, good job. A little trick for y'all. Take your glue and give it a little quick pre-smear. Smear. Give it a quick smear. You're smearing it. It'll help it from squirting out the sides okay. as much. It's still going to, but it's better to get it ahead of time before you put that board on there. And then you can't do anything about it because you can't get in those grooves. Now we're gonna obviously not finish this to a fine finished 
project, so it doesn't really matter, but just teaching him how to do these things the right way. All right. Okay, then we got to drill. We're going to secure the back panel. Good, that's fine. It's nice and slow. Good. Okay, don't strip it. All right, here, I can tighten them up all the way up. You just get them in there, John. Good job, buddy. Push, push, push hard in. There you go. Good job. All right, clean up. Clean up, crew. Oh, that's right, buddy. I had a dream about doing this. mess. You did? Yeah. Deja vu? And it, yes, I, every night I've been having dreams of what's going to happen. That's pretty cool. Do you know the lucky numbers for the lottery? No, because <laughs> we're not going to get How the lottery. How sweet would that be? Oh, that'd be sick. I love it. I love that you love doing it. All right, so that's kind of my version of the countersink bit. He's drilling in there, and he's going to drill that drill bit down there about an eighth of an inch. That way that screw head will sit down there nice and pretty if you want to cover it up. A little more, buddy. All right, guys, we're going to get a final sand on this thing, smooth it all out the way we want it, and it will be ready to finish and put on the wall. The only thing we don't want to do on here is paint these usually because all the wear and tear from putting bats in and out is going to chip the paint. So stain it, burn it, or do something like that. All right? Paint, no bueno. Now, what we're going to do with this bad boy is we're going to burn it. We're going to use our Benzomatic, and I'm going to burn this thing just to add a little character and flair to it. No right or wrong here. I'm just going to burn it to have fun. I could always stain right over top of that as well if I don't like it, or I could spray paint it and seal it. So don't be afraid just to try some stuff and see what you like the look of. All right, my dudes, there we go. Whoop, that one's hot. There we go, I just literally made it kind of rustic. That's the look I was going for. Just a little something different. It can be chopped up, it can be burned up, however you want to do it. So let's go put this over here and show you guys how it turned out. Right, so here is our garage. This is our play garage. Right across from my other garage, this is the garage where all the magic happens. Right here, you can see we got our foldable pitching mound. We've got our turf in here. Got our heavy duty turf for the catching. We got our big lights up here. Now, what we've got going on is, this is the wall I'm gonna put the bat rack on right here. You can see all the bats we have, right? So we're gonna get these babies up off the wall. The ones they're gonna use for the season we're gonna keep. Extras can go in the bucket or in the other garage. So let's get this bat rack installed. Perfectly level. Now, got that in. All we gotta do is put the bats in. Bat rack installed. Yeah, DIY bat rack. Less than $10, guys. All right, we're done with this project. Another DIY in the books. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it. If you have not hit that like button yet, do so and help support the channel. We'll see you guys on the next video.